All right, let's get Blackbird on here. And so what I'll, what I, I guess what I'll do uh, for today is um, I'll cover the um, new uh, options added to Blackbird here. We'll cover that again. And all right, so we have Blackbird on the chart here, ready to go. And so the main options added to Blackbird with this last update deal with um, scaling in or legging in or you know adding in to a position here. Um, so let's see. Um, let's just say our first our first order. Uh, or I should say, our, our, yeah, our first order, we're just going to get in with a market order, right? And I'll just use some simple profit target and stop loss, right? So our first order will be a 10 tick profit target there. And then, um, you know, let's say your system um, involves scaling in to a position here. And um, so let's see, what I'll do is I'll just copy the order A and so B is going to be a scale in and we're also going to scale in with the market order as well um, and um, uh, yeah I guess the focus here is on the profit target and stop loss so I'll just kind of leave them where they're at um, so the focus is on these new options here so in the entry order settings um, you'll notice right there's um, two new settings here there's a placement delay and a placement trigger um, now the the delay is pretty simple um, you know it just it simply applies a delay uh, before the order actually gets submitted um, so um, you know, simply enough, uh, you know, you can just apply, you know, make sure that it just have the market order weight, you know, a, a bar or two, um, you know, or uh, if you need a time-based delay, um, you know, I've heard some people's systems, they want to wait um, five minutes, you know, so you can just put in there uh, 300 seconds is five minutes so you can put just a straight five minute delay um, before this second order goes in um, right or um, possibly you might want <clears throat> to say if you're counter trend trading um, you might want to wait for the market to go you know 10 ticks further against the direction of your trade so if if order a is you know if you got a long signal and order a is in a long position then if uh, the market goes 10 ticks lower all right so in other words against the direction of your long trade right, you could use that as a delay as well so you know or if you want to keep adding into your position um, uh, when you're making money then of course you could just use ticks in direction so you could say you know um, after 10 ticks of profit then you know throw another position on so such as that um, right so this delay is um, very simple and the the delay this delay if you notice if you look at this window it operates the same as the trailing actions delay. So if I go into my stop loss here and make a rule here, you'll notice that this delay is the same type of a delay, right? Just a, a waiting mechanism um, before the next step is taken, right? So it's just, uh, again, a delay before the next um, step can be taken so um, 
All right, obviously let's cancel that. So back to the entry order here. Now what really fires off a scaled in position, right? What really scales, what fires off a, or what executes a secondary or third entry position is the trigger here, this trigger mechanism. Now if we go, if we go through all these triggers, again, these triggers, these are the exact same triggers that are used in um, trailing actions. These are the same triggers used in the trailing actions. So if we go back, let me go back to the stop loss here as an example. So you'll, if you look at the this trigger on column, if we look at these triggers, they're the exact same triggers. Um, you'll notice that you know quite often these menus or you know these options of um, or menus of options here um, are really they're kind of universal right they're not specific to any one um, kind of task I, you know all these um, various options are designed intentionally to be kind of universally used um, in different areas right because when it really comes right down to it an order is an order is an order there's really only um, three types of orders there's a market a limit or a stop and depending on how you use them defines whether it's a entry order a profit target or a stop loss right but when it comes down to it you know these three order types are still the same order it's either a market a limit or a stop so you know so when it kind of comes to you know these various menus and all their options um, you know they are really universal because orders themselves are really simple in 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 on them in a in on themselves you know it's just how we use them we kind of give them different labels which makes them think which makes them seem like they're different and more sophisticated but really orders are boil down to real simplicity you know there's either a market a stop or a limit and depending on how we use it defines it as a profit target or a stop loss or an entry order right so um, again getting back to the triggers here right so and uh, let's get rid of that good old windows um, so getting back to the triggers um, <clears throat> now, probably I'll I'll start with the with with the most common um, trigger here that people will use to scale in to a, a position here, <clears throat> and that's going to be the trade signal trigger. The trade signal trigger, right? So that is this the trade signal up top here, right? So these are the trade signals up here. So um, <clears throat> um, again, scaling in is um, really designed for automation. Um, it really is designed for automation. So um, it, it, it can be used for discretionary trading, um, but there are a few, few limits. So uh, we'll go over that here, later on here. Um, so let's go over. The, so let's continue on with the uh, the trade signal trigger here. Um, so its default setting is pretty much what you want. So when a right, so the first trade signal that comes in, that's going to execute our you know order A here. Order A, it it doesn't have a trigger. There's no trigger, no placement trigger for order A. So um, it's just going to um, enter immediately on the first, you know, on the first trade signal, um, you know, or the first press of your, you know, chart buttons here, your chart trader buttons, All right? So none means that this order A gets submitted immediately, um, regardless of how, you know, 
regardless of what you're using to submit the order. You know, it could be a, an automated trade signal, or you could be using the chart trader or the dynamic planner. Um, so when your trigger set to none, that means those orders just go in immediately. Here. So now when we start using the placement trigger, that's what will that's what creates the scaling in, you know, or the legging in effect uh, for orders. Um, so uh, again here, so typically the mode is going to be um, in this uh, a signal in the same direction, right? So for if, if we're using trade signals, um, right? So let's say for example you're, we're using a bloodhound signal. Right, so if you get a long bloodhound signal, right, order A is going to trigger fire off immediately. And now for B, so if we get a second long bloodhound signal, right, the, a second long signal would be in the same direction, you know, as the current open position. So, and then what we're actually looking for is the second signal there. So we would want to up. Um, increment that up to two there All right so there we go so now this is set up to submit a market order on the second um, bloodhound signal there well or I should say second trade signal whatever it might be it doesn't have to be a, a bloodhound signal it could be some other you know it could be an indicator warehouse signal or, or uh, an LTS um, uh, trade signal as well um, and then let's see let's um uh, let's see before I go a little further here how about I'm just gonna get rid of these profit targets and turn these guys into runners and I'm gonna make a third order here just to exaggerate this example so let's say we have a third order to scale in with and let's increment our signal number to three. All right, so order A is gonna go in on the first um, trade signal, order B will be this, order B is gonna be the second trade signal, and then order C will be our third trade signal. And what I'll do is I'll just pop in some a bloodhound sig signal as so we can uh, kind of go through a, an example demonstration here <clears throat> all right so let me just kind of pop in some dummy signals so we'll use this crossover two and let's see there we go so this Price inflection with a MACD filter. This will generate a bunch of trace signals um, all in the same direction here. <clears throat> all right, so that'll work. And I'm gonna gonna lock the entry signal to that price inflection with MACD filter. I'm just gonna lock that in. All right. Um, <clears throat> Click OK, and um, you'll notice Bloodhound's not on the chart. Our Bloodhound signals aren't on the chart, not yet. But if we reload, if we reload our chart, then that allows Blackbird to then throw the Bloodhound signals on the chart. There, <clears throat> there we go. And then always, you know, be sure to um, use the chart pull down menu and select the correct logic template. Okay, so there's our, uh, there's, that's going to be our example entry signals there, um, right? A whole bunch of them. So this ought to work out great. And let's turn the auto trailer on and let's start generating some signals here. All right, as soon as this bar closes, we should get a short signal. <clears throat> there we go. And, oops, um, what 
happened. Oh, <laughs> all right, just a moment here. Um, I think I left a <clears throat> trailing, yep, I left a trailing rule in, in place here by accident. Let's cancel that. Let's just double check the other stop losses, make sure there's no trailing rules. Okay, there we go. All right, now we're good to go. All right, we should get a, there we go. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a bunch of up and down bars, up and down bars, and that'll generate a bunch of short signals for this example here. And I just got to make sure to not get that stop loss hit. <clears throat> All right, we should get another, another entry signal here. And there we go. Great. So we can see we got order A and order B in there. And I'm just going to move the market up again a little bit and then make another down bar. And then we should get, we'll see a stop loss for order C. So, and if you, if you notice, um, you'll see that the uh, average, um, Ooh, let's see. Don't I don't want to get those stop losses hit. Okay, so as I was saying, if you look at the entry, um, the entry flags here. So we had one there, and we had one there. You'll notice that the um, average entry price their flag is right in the middle, and there we go. And so there is our third. Um, order and so now that we have all three orders uh, we'll be done here and so if I make uh, let's see I'll move the market up and then move the market down again all right so if I generate a a fourth short signal You'll notice there's not going to be any more orders going in. All right, there we go. There's another short signal. And um, yeah, so there we go. So there's, all right, so that was an example of scaling in uh, with three market orders there. Let's see. So let, let me, um, let's go over some let's go over some of the other uh, triggering conditions here and see if I can come up with some examples um, you know off the top of my head here for some of these other triggers and how they might be used um, so let's see here um, uh, let's see probably the the second uh, the second most used option would be the actual Bloodhound signals, right? So most of you guys do own Bloodhound already and you're using Bloodhound to, you know, generate these, uh, you know, some, your trade signals. So, so if you want to build a system that scales in, right, you're probably, you know, again, the second most common trigger would probably be, you know, just um, setting up your bloodhound signals here to, to scale in with. Um, and so, um, you know, some, just to kind of come up with a crazy example here. So let's, let's load this crossover test two in here again. And, um, you know, you can see I've got a lot of logic templates in this you know, crossover test system example here. Um, and let's see here. Yeah, so I, you know, I, I'll just pick this price inflection uh, logic template here. Uh, this price inflection logic template is going to generate a lot of signals. Um, and let's say I wanted to take all of these price inflection signals 
um, you know, then I could take the signal trigger mode and let's see, I could take a signal in either direction. Right, a signal in either direction. So in other words, it doesn't matter if it's a long signal or a short signal, any signal coming out of this Bloodhound price inflection logic template will execute um, will execute uh, order C. It'll execute order C here. <clears throat> so what this is going to do most likely is order A is going to fire off. All right, order A always gets fired off first. Now, order B, you know, it's still set to, you know, looking for a, a trade signal in the same direction. It's going it's to look for that second one. But order C, we set order C up to use a different Bloodhound logic template signal here, right? This one's going to use just the price inflection, um, right, without the MACD filter. So it's just price inflection only, no no MACD filter. And we're going to take a s signals in either direction. So, uh, right, so it's going to take long signals and short signals to execute um, an order here. Right. And just to kind of help out here, I'm going to widen these stop loss. I'm going to make these stop losses a little wider so they're not going to get hit so easily. So, okay. So let's close this all out. And let's see here. Let's, I'm going to move the market up a little bit. All right. So I'll pull the market down. We'll generate a short signal. So we should get an order firing off immediately. All right, there's order A. And, oh, and, let's see. And order C is right behind it. If you notice, there's, um, actually, yeah, if we look at the text here, if we look at the text, we can see entry A and entry C, right? So um, that's right, C actually uh, went in um, immediately um, and the reason why C went in immediately that's right is something I kind of overlooked was because um, right so when we're using a bloodhound signal there is no um, setting in here to um, there is no setting here to to count which um, which bloodhound signal you're waiting on, right? So it's a little different than the trade signal trigger, you know, actually has a number of signals counter. It actually has a, a, a signal, yeah, a number of signals. It actually has a counter there. Whereas, right, the bloodhound signal doesn't have a counter uh, mechanism. So every bloodhound signal is gonna fire off a trade there. Uh, so let's close that up here and let's, um, yeah, so I'm going to move the market up and let's take a look at the price inflection signals here. So as soon as we get this bar closing up, we're going to get an up a, um, yeah, we're going to get a long signal from, from that. There you go. And, oh, uh, that's right. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. I think our master signal, oh, yeah, our master signal generated a long, so it reversed everything on us. Um, so, um, all right, you'll notice that all the orders just reversed here. And the reason why you got to remember, up here in our trade signals area, our master, the master trade signal is this price inflection with the MACD filter. 
So this logic, this logic template just reversed to a long signal. And so it reversed everything. So. All right, so we're dealing with long signals now. All right, so let me close this bar here that's building and I'll make a another another up bar which will generate a signal there and let's see uh, let's see so we got order a and order C in and let's see we should get order B here in just a moment let me make another let me pull the bar down let me pull the price down a little bit so I can generate another um, price inflection up and just a sec let me check something here all right and let's all right let's move the markets up so on this next up bar that will generate a um, another long signal and that will execute order B there we go so there's order there's the stop loss for order B there there um, Let's see here. Now, I guess let me, I'll just make a little mental note here, right? So essentially, um, right, order C. So let's, let's review order C again. So remember order C, um, order C is using the bloodhound signal as its trigger. And this is going to fire off a trade uh, with a, Bloodhound signal in either either direction here. Um, so um, so what that's doing is that order C is executing immediately with order A, and you'll note that Blackbird's not going to keep submitting order C since it's open. Right. Order C is is open, and so it's not going to keep su submitting order C here. Um, so if we want to take a look at the Bloodhound signals for order C, we can just right we can change our pull down menu to price inflection, right? So you can see there's all kinds of long and short signals that are coming from the price inflection logic template. Right, and so order C is a, is set up to execute on any signal in any direction. Right, any signal in any direction here. So let's take a look again here. So if we take, take a look at order C, we look at the triggers. We have bloodhound, then we have the signal trigger mode is signal in either direction. Right, so that's a long, long or short, it doesn't matter, signal in either direction. Right, so in other words, order C is going to be firing off on any kind of signal. It doesn't matter if it's long or short. Um, but you'll notice that you know the order C is not re-entering on every bloodhound signal, right? Because it's already in place here. So um, <clears throat> let's see here. So. Yeah, since or, order C and order A are sitting on top of each other, um, yeah, there's no way to separate those two. Um, and in, in a uh, w once we roll over to Ninja Eight, we're going to be looking at building a mechanism in order to separate um, orders that are sitting on top of each other such as the stop loss for order A and C are sitting on top of each other, right? So kind of right now they're 
they're both moved together. Um, right, that's kind of Ninja's standard practice there, but we're going to look into um, building some kind of a mechanism so we can separate these orders if you want to. So um, let's see. Yeah, I was hoping to separate A and C. Actually, here, I'll just do this. <clears throat> let's see, order C. I'm just going to change the stop loss for order C. I'll make it 15, 15 ticks versus 20 ticks for the stop losses. So that'll separate order C from order A. All right. And um, all right, so I just need to generate a signal to open a new position here. All right, as soon as this bar closes up, that should generate a long signal, I believe. There we go. Okay, good. So there's there's order A and C. Now they're separated. Um, so let me get order B in here. So let me generate um, another long signal. Okay, there we go. So now we got orders A, B, and C in there. And um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to get, we're going to take order C off there. We'll take that off and I'll pull the <clears throat> market down. So when I pull this down bar in, and uh, let's see here. and turn the price inflections on okay now let me generate a long signal from the price inflection and that should pop in order c again uh, let's see um no it's not okay good 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 so um, so what I've just shown here is that, uh, right, your orders, you know, A, B, and C are not going to keep re-executing over and over and over again. So they're just going to execute once, once per, um, let's see, how do we say this? Once per trade set, I guess you could say, um, all right, so we need to close out the other orders um, before it re-enters, before order C and order B re-enter. We need to flatten out the whole the whole position there. And uh, so I'm just going to generate another. We'll generate another bloodhound signal here on the price inflection logic template, and. There we go. So there's another signal, right? Another signal for order C. And we can see order C did not um, did not get submitted again. So all right. So the point being is that um, the point being is that with order C, <clears throat> right, order C is not tied to any number of signals coming in, right? So order B, using the trade signal trigger, it's tied to the second uh, signal coming in, <clears throat> and order C is not, right? Order C is, is tied to a, a bloodhound signal, um, 
Great. So order C is going to fire off as soon as we get a, a bloodhound signal coming in here. All right. And it just so happens that this 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 price inflection logic template, right? It's essentially it's kind of generating the same trade signals as what I'm using for my kind of master trade signals, right? I'm using a price inflection, but but with a, a MACD filter, right? So that's why order A and C are going in at the same time. You know, kind of this might make a confusing example here, but you know, the point being is that you could set order C, you know, to any um, to any bloodhound signal you want. Um, you know, and C will fire off at that time. I probably should have used the second bar. So that way order C would not go in at the same time as order A. Um, right. Um, so again, kind of backing out, you know, there's a lot of moving pieces here. So I'm trying to clarify them all and kind of try and clarify them and, and keep them separate since there's a lot of moving parts here. But um, you know, again, my overall point is that, you know, once, once your first order goes in and then your scaling in orders go in, so once B and C go in, uh, the point is that B and C are not going to keep um, scaling in, right? So once, um, you know, once we get A submitted and then your scaling in orders could also get submitted. But once the position, once the entire position goes flat, then that restarts the whole scaling in sequence again. All right. So the B, um, so again, the, uh, another point being is that A and B are not going to keep scaling in as long as that position is open there. All right. So, um yeah all right i see there's some questions on the board here so let me uh, take a look at these questions here and i imagine what my demonstration here probably uh aroused a few questions so that's good that's good <clears throat> oh okay so jeff is asking uh so here's the follow-up um so when order c is placed and the bloodhound signal goes against it, why doesn't the trade reverse? Well, because, okay, yeah, so order, so this bloodhound signal only applies to order C, not the entire set. Um, so yeah, I kind of hope I made, I was made, I think I kind of answered your question already by showing you that, remember, this is the master trade signal. So order C is not gonna go in by itself. Um, Right, so the master trade signal here is actually is what is um, dictating the um, uh, dictating the direction of the trade here. Right, so the price inflection with the MACD filter is actually what's dictating the direction of the trade. So, um, all right, okay. So with that, let's see. I think. All right. Yeah. So I got those questions out of the way. So let's let's go back to the order monitor um, functions here. All right. So um, let's see. Okay. Good. I've got some. I got order A and order C on here. So the order monitor has something to show us. All right. So with the order monitor, essentially it's what its purpose is, is, um, you know, as you can actually see, uh, you know, the, the state of each order set, right? So we have order set A, and we can see that, right, it, it, it's entry, the entry order ha has been filled. We can see there's no profit target, right? The profit target in the middle is blank, um, but we can see it has a stop loss, we got the price there and we can see the stop loss has been accepted. So the stop loss is in a working state. 
Um, we can see order B. Order B, everything's blank. So that means order B is 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 not on. It's not open. So that that um, if order B had been had been submitted, we would see some information in here. Um, so we would have seen the entry order price. And if yeah, if order B had been filled, or if order B had been executed, um, we if order B had been executed, and then uh, and then closed out. In other words, if the stop loss had been hit for order B, then we would have seen um, a a uh, price value for the stop loss, and it would have said filled as well. Right. So bottom line is, if order B had gone in and then gotten filled um, and then closed out, we would see some information here. But since there's no information here, there's no price data, no nothing, that means order B has not been uh, submitted yet. <clears throat> so, um, And then, of course, we can see order C here. Order C, you know, is, is the same situation as order A. Um, right, so that the entry order has been filled and it has a, a working uh, stop loss or accepted stop loss there. Um, okay, so the next, probably the next component that you want to be aware of is the auto trailing buttons, right? The green buttons. So you can see, right, the global auto trailing and then we have individual auto trailing buttons here, right? So these, um, you know, these only um, have an effect when you have trailing rules. So, right, these stop losses don't have any trailing rules here. So they're not gonna really do anything, um, right? There's no stop loss trailing. So, so these auto trailing aren't, it's they're you know they're just not going to do anything in this case here, but if my stop losses had trailing rules applied to them, then you could turn on and off the trailing rules. Um, also, at the same time, if you move an order, so let's say I manually move stop loss C, well that's gonna that's gonna automatically disable this auto trailing. But since there is no trailing for C, it's not going to do anything to it. Um, so let's see. Uh, probably, yeah. You know what? Let's let's set up a more realistic example here. So let's go in and set up some. Uh, stop losses with a trailing rule. And I'm going to modify things a little bit just so my stop losses don't get hit too easily. Um, All right, so I actually modified this break even so that it's actually a 15 tick uh, break even. So 15 ticks in profit, it'll, our stop loss will move to break even. And then it's gonna, it's gonna stay as a 20 tick trailing stop loss. All right, so the stop loss goes in as a 20 tick stop loss, and then it's got a 15 tick break even and then a 20 tick trailing. So that way I can keep those uh, stop losses far enough away from price so they don't get taken out too quickly. Otherwise my example will end too soon. So uh, again, I'm just going to modify this quickly.
Okay, all right. And so again, I'm going to set C. I'm setting order C to a 15 tick stop loss. So that way A and C don't go in on top of each other here. Um, and let's see here. That's right. Remember, I also did, I did change the Bloodhound logic template for order C. So order C is going to go in at a different time as well. All right. Um, okay. So now, so my whole point of doing all this is to make some trailing stop losses. So that way, uh, that way we can actually see the auto trailing buttons turning on and off automatically here. So, all right. So, uh, let's see. Yeah, so let me, let's generate a trade signal here. All right, so we have a short trade signal. All right, so we have order A in here. Um, so we know order A has trailing rules attached to it. So if I move order A now, you see how the auto trailing button turns off, right? So again, if you're trailing, if your stop loss has trailing rules um, and you move that stop loss, it's going to turn off the trailing rules for it, right? And uh, there we go. So we can see order C just went in. And if we look down here, the auto trailing for C is still on. So C is going to auto trail, but if I move it, we can see the auto trailing is going to turn off because I manually moved it. So and so then when you want the auto trailing to turn back on for C and A, all you got to do is just click the button and click the button. And there you go. Now they're both the auto trailing is both back on. All right. So, but keep in mind the trailing rules I created for stop loss A and actually all of the stop loss trailing rules I created, um, they're not going to start trailing until we get to that break even exit point, right? Remember, they're 20 tick, they're 20 tick trailing rules, so we got to get 20 ticks in profit before they'll start trailing there. So, um, okay, so there's so I've kind of showed right the individual. Um, auto trailing buttons here. So let me just kind of move A and move C again, A and C, right? So we can see that A is turned off, C, um, sorry, A is turned off, C is turned off. Now, um, you know, let's say I, I want to turn both of them on at the same time without having to do two double clicks. Uh, so that's what this global auto trail button's for. So we now have a global auto trail button here and I can just click enabled and it enables all of the auto trailings again, right? So you can see they both turned on at the same time. So, and great. Okay. So now we even have um, order B in here, here. So let's say I move my stop loss for B. I move my stop loss for C and move it for A. Right, so we can see the auto trailing is turned off for all of them, A, B, and C. So I can just click the global auto trail and click enable, and bingo. They're all turned on there. All right. um, and also what you can do is you notice that there's these lock buttons. So I can globally lock them on if I want. So I can globally lock them on, you can see individually individually they're all locked as well. So now if I move a stop loss, you can see the global, or you can see the auto trailing doesn't turn off anymore. Right? It doesn't turn off. So now, of course, um, that can be problematic. So keep in mind, my trailing rules haven't kicked in yet. 
So that's why I can move these orders around and they stick where they're at because the trailing rules have not kicked in yet. They won't kick in until I get 20 ticks in profit. So let's, I'm going to move the market down here and generate 20 ticks in profit. And so once the once the stop loss trailing rules, once they kick in, I won't be able to move the orders anymore because the trailing rule is going to take over. Every time I try and move a, a stop loss order somewhere, its trailing rule is going to kick in because remember I've got the auto trailing button locked. I have the auto trailing locked on. So that means I won't be able to move my stop loss anymore and have it take effect. So there we go. So we can see order A is already um, order A is already moving. It's already trailing. And let's see. There we go. Yep. So now if I move, so you can see my trailing rules, no matter where I move them, my trailing rules are you know they're locked on so I'd have to you know if I really wanted to move my stop losses I would need to you know unlock them and then when I move them you can see it, it disables the auto trailing right if I'm gonna manually manipulate my stop losses then that's gonna turn off the auto trailing so that way you don't get that conflict right so and then if I lock them on and then enable the ball then pretty soon oops oh, oh hold on let me unlock it let's enable them first and then lock them okay bingo now we can see um let's see oh i need to adjust the scaling there there we go all right, so now we can see yeah, the trailing is locked in place, locked on, and you know, and so your stop losses are just going to keep moving right back into their trailing position there. So, um, all right, and so if we wanted to, we could, you know, you can lock just individual ones. So I could lock C on. So I can't move C anymore. Well, I can move C, but it's just going to keep it's just going to keep auto trailing here. So as soon as we make another, as soon as we get another tick in profit, or stop loss C is going to start trailing again. Um, so remember C is locked on, but A and B, I turned off the lock. So A and B with the lock off, I can that will disable the auto trailing for A and B here. And let's see, let's move the market down a little bit so we can get so we can get C to start trailing again. There we go. Yeah, so as soon as we started making a, a, some more profit, we can see C started trailing again. So, um, all right, yeah. So there's kind of the, there's the um, the ins and outs of the auto trailing buttons. There, um, and let's see here. Let's let me move all these stop losses up here um, so the last thing to cover is the break even um, right so we can see for each order set it has its own individual break even and then there's a global break even um, so if I just click so let's click break even for order a click break even and bingo you can see the stop loss moved to break even right so um, it's actually it's 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 break even plus half a tick, so it looks like our our average entry price is somewhere in the half tick range. So all right, um, so 
you know, clearly each order has an individual break even, right? I could move order B to break even if I wanted to. There we go. Nice and simple. Um, and, um, you know, we have a global break even. So if I hit the global break even, then, you know, that's going to move all three stop losses to a break even um, at the same time there. And there's also an offset here. So if I want to break even plus one, there we go. I can do that. And now we can see all of the break even buttons are uh, break even plus one. All right. So, uh, you know, essentially this button allow gives you manual control over your break even. Right. So, um, right. Uh, I, you know, these stop losses do actually have a break even rule built into them, uh, but you know, you can also manually decide to use a break even as well. So, um, yeah, let's see. Let's, let's go back to the kind of the offset here. So, if you wanted to do a, you know, you could do a break even, you know, minus one tick. Right, so break even minus one tick. Let, actually, let's exaggerate it. Let's do a minus two tick, and I'll move A to break even minus two. So there we go. So we can see um, that stop loss A is at break even, you know, minus two ticks. So that would be a, a two tick loss, right? That would be a, a stop loss at a two tick, a break even with a two tick loss there. So if you put in a positive value for your break even, right, then that's going to be a profit. Right. So now if I could click break even plus two, there we go. So that's going to be a, a, you know, a break even with a two tick profit. Um, so, um, yeah. And um, so the, the, the break even offset applies to all orders. Yeah. Um, and let's see here. Um, all right, I, I think that about covers the order monitor panel there. Um, Let's see. Well, well, that's right. There's actually two two buttons up top here. Um, uh, that uh, you know, just a little extra feature there. So the preview, this preview long and preview short. What these buttons do is they will give you a preview of your orders here. Um, so as we can see, my my order sets only have stop losses. So all we're going to see is the orange dots of where the stop loss would go. Right. If, if I add a profit target to one of these guys, um, so let's add a profit target to C here. And I'm just going to, I'm going to make it a huge profit target. And oh, yep. Yeah. So, in order for this preview to work correctly, uh, we have to close out this order set, right? Because this order set is essentially um, the current order set. So, let me flatten this. There we go. So, now that we're in a flat position, now the new order set takes, oh, takes, uh, takes effect. And so now we can see the the uh, green dots that uh, sh would show you where your profit target would be. So what this is showing you, this is not any kind of backtest result. This is showing you where um, your orders would be placed if every single bar was an entry bar. So this, these dots are showing you the initial placement 
of an order. Right. So if we open up the order set, um, all right. So for let's let's take a look at order C, right? So for order C with this profit target, what the green dot is showing us is the initial placement. And if we take a look at our stop loss, the initial placement for the stop loss, that's what we're seeing. That's what these orange dots are showing us is the initial placement for each of the stop losses and for any profit targets. All right, so if I add another profit target, like so, and let's reset this, All right, there we go. So now we can see the initial placement for profit target B and profit target C, and then we can see the stop losses, the initial placement. All right, so there you go. It's just a preview of the initial placement for your orders. So, right, so we can do a preview long or a preview short. Right, so. so, this the preview button uh, can be handy when you're using an indicator. So, if you're using an indicator to set your stop loss, um, yeah, say your initial placement say you're placing your stop loss based on some indicator, say like the Anna super trend indicator. Um, you know, I guess that's probably more practical as to when these previews can become handy for you. So, um, but, um, you know, at the same time, you know, doing these previews here, you know, I guess, you know, you can kind of see where your profit targets and stop losses are going to land in the context of, you know, uh, of you know price movement for the day. So, um, all right. So there we go. That covers the order monitor window there. All right. So with, with that, let me take a look. See if there are any questions on this. Okay, so it doesn't look like there's any questions on the order monitor here. And all right, so here we go is a new question. Jeff is asking, any changes to the dynamic planner? Yes. So with the, the last major update, um, which is 6383, um, we made changes to the dynamic planner. So this latest update is just a minor, uh, or uh, not minor, but it's a bug fix uh, for a rare little bug. So there's no no enhancements, <clears throat> um, so no further enhancements are going to be, no further features are going to be added to Blackbird um, for for Ninja Seven. So uh, once we start, once we have everything rolled over to Ninja Eight, then we will continue adding more features um, to Blackbird and Bloodbird and Bloodhound. So. All right, um, so with that, let's take a look at the dynamic planner here. So let me close everything out. So the dynamic planner. <clears throat> um, let's see what's gonna happen here. Um, all right. Yeah, let me make, let me make a order set here. Um, <clears throat> that's going to work better with the dynamic planner. So, so I'm just going to make um, three order sets here with different profit targets. All right, this should make a good a good example here. Um, all right, dynamic planner. Um, so let's plan long here. Um, so one of the big improvements now with the dynamic planner is a, uh, it's a little more um, intuitive um, and it's uh, smarter now in um, 
you know, in the way your orders and way your profit targets and stop losses would track, would track your um, entry order. So let's say, right, so if I adjust my limit order, right, you can see the profit targets and stop losses are all moving, right, in sync with uh, with the entry order here. And let's lock the scaling for a moment, right? So there we go. We can see all the profit targets and stop losses are moving, you know, with the entry order. Now, if I grab one of my profit targets, all right, so I manually decide, you know, I want to turn this into a huge profit target kind of runner. So I manually moved C. Now, if I grab my entry orders, right, we can see C, C is locked in place, right? I manually moved C, and so now it's locked in place. So that right there is kind of one of the key enhancements that we added um, to the dynamic planner. So order, so profit targets for A and B, they will still, uh, they're still linked to your entry price, right? So they will adjust up and down as you adjust your entry price, right? Same with the pro same with the stop loss there. Um, so let me, I need to go in here and let me adjust um, the stop loss here. So I'll adjust the stop loss for order C so I can make a further demonstration, right? So let's say I'll take C, profit target C up there and I'll move stop loss C down there. So again, we can see the stop loss as well. Stop losses, if I manually move a stop loss, it's gonna stay locked in place as well, um, it, regardless of where I, I move um, my entry order, right? So we can see that profit target C is, you know, it's stuck there at, at uh, here, let's, let's move it to uh, 46 bucks even. Yeah, so profit target C is stuck at $46 even, regardless of where I move my entry order. So, um, yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah, another, uh, like a, a side uh, a side enhancement now is that when, um, if you move a profit target, or if you move a stop loss, it no longer, um, disables the auto trailing buttons anymore. Um, yeah, so we've um, disconnected the auto trailing buttons with the dynamic planner now, kind of made that disconnection there. So um, another enhancement to the back backend. Um, uh, let's see here. Oh, okay, yeah, here's another little um, improvement. So you see that how stop loss A and B are sitting on top of each other. So now uh, when order, when these flags are stacked on top of each other, when you click it, it's gonna grab the whole set. So that way you can more, you can quickly uh, adjust your stop losses. Um, so you can move them all at once. Whereas before you had to grab each flag separately, so you had to make three separate moves in order to adjust your stop loss, right? And uh, that is not uh, that is not a good situation for scalpers. Scalpers need to be able to get, you know, scalpers need to be able to adjust things very quickly. So, um, so if you stack your order flags, um, you'll be grabbing the whole stack. Right. Oh, well, okay, well, okay, maybe not. <laughs> uh, yeah, we can see with the stop losses um, that that is the case here, uh, but not with the profit targets. So 
So um, usually profit targets um, profit targets are typically not meant to be stacked on top of each other. Um, but with stop losses, you know, if someone is using the same, so let me reset this here, right? So with A and B, with stop losses for A and B on top of each other, you know, typically most people are going to want to keep it that way. They're not going to want to separate their stop losses if they're, you know, using the same stop loss for each profit target here. But profit targets, typically most traders do want to keep their profit targets separated from each other. <clears throat> right. Um, yeah, so there we go. So again, we can see the only, the only order that's still um, linked to the entry price is our profit target for A, right? But I, I manually moved the profit target for B and C, and I manually moved all of our stop losses. So those are no longer sliding up, up and down with the entry order. So, right. And if you want to reset everything, all you got to do is just turn the planner off, turn it back on. And now everything is, um, right, everything's linked again. So all the profit targets and stop losses are linked to my entry order there. So, um, so as far as, you know, uh, user, the user interface um, goes, that's, yeah, those are the improvements that the, you know, that the user sees um on the you know um, on the chart and whatnot uh, but there also been a bunch of improvements on the back end um, so the uh, the, uh, the dynamic planner um, used to um, used to uh, uh, take up a bunch of uh, ninja resources and so the dynamic planner um, would sometimes run slow under certain conditions, um, but we have uh, stripped out all that unnecessary processing that goes in, that goes on in the background with the dynamic planner. Um, so, if you are using the scale to fit button, and your number of contracts were, um, uh, you know, uh, automatically adjusting. Um, that used to be fairly CPU intensive, but it's not anymore. A lot of those those extra CPU cycles have been removed, um, so therefore it. Uh, so, I guess the bottom line is the dynamic planner hardly impacts Ninja anymore. So we hardly we hardly see any impact on Ninja anymore. Whereas, um, yeah, in earlier versions of Blackbird, the dynamic planner would sometimes have a pretty good impact on Ninja Trader, but not anymore. Just a mental note, the scale of fit's not gonna do anything here because um, I don't because I don't think I have any money management rules turned on. Let's see. Yeah, I don't have any money management rules turned on, so scale of fit and the dynamic planner is not gonna do anything. So but if if I did turn on the risk per trade, <clears throat> let's say, let's see, where are my profit? I need to kind of do a quick calculation of where we're at here. Um, thousand bucks. All right. Say I don't want to risk any more than. Um, Seven hundred dollars. All right, so I set a maximum risk of seven hundred dollars, and so now if I go to the dynamic planner and let's reset everything. So whenever you make changes, um, you, um, you know you need to go and turn off the dynamic planners to kind of, which kind of resets everything. Um, and so then we can turn on the scale to fit, turn on the plan long. And um, let's see, let's see. Uh, so my risk is at $650 already. 
Wow, okay. So if I move in my if I move my stop losses in, now we'll see the number of contracts can now scale up. Um, right, so now I've been put on five contracts. So we can see order set A has three contracts, B is one, and C is one contract. And if we take a look at the original, so I guess we need to kind of back out here. So we can see order A originally started off with two contracts, and then B is one contract, C is one contract. All right, so we got two, one, one is our number of contracts. So if I reduce the risk, then we can see um, Blackbird's going to increase the number of contracts there. So. All right, there we go. So now we have seven contracts total. So three plus two plus two. There. All right. So anyways, the, so the scale to fit, you know, uh, that's been improved on the back end, so it does not uh, impact uh, NinjaTrader's performance anymore. So... Right. So um, keep in mind. So you notice when I turned off the scale to fit, um, the number of contracts hasn't adjusted yet. Right. So again, you'll just want to properly reset the dynamic planner by just turning it off, turning it back on. All right. And that properly resets everything there. All right, well, with that, let me take a look at the question boards. See if there's any questions on this. Let's see. So Jeff is asking, when you hit execute, um, I take it. Um, uh, so let's go back to the dynamic planner here. So if I hit execute, do the buttons on the order man monitor um, get re-enabled? Um, well, I guess let's just say that, um, you know, with the dynamic planner, these are not live orders, right? These are, um, uh, these are kind of like phantom orders, um, right? They're planning stage, right? This is a planning stage. These are not live orders. Uh, that's kind of why they have this translucent look to them. If you notice that the order flags are a little transparent, right? They look a little lighter on the chart, and they uh, they have a transparency to them. Um, it, let's see here. If um, yeah, let me move the profit target for A. Right? See how you can you can see the orange bar behind it, right? Because there's a transparency to it. So these are not live orders, and so that is why the order monitor is not uh, active, right? Because there's no live order yet. So hitting execute, uh, let's change this here. So if I hit execute, now these become live orders, and now the order monitor has something to show you. So the order monitor only shows you uh, gives you feedback on live orders, right? The dynamic planner um, doesn't show you, or the dynamic planner doesn't give you feedback on planned orders from the dynamic planner, right? So, um, wait. so keep in mind, I can have a live order on, and then I can go into the dynamic planner and start to, you know, pre-plan, you know, uh, another trade if I want to, right? And that's because, remember, dynamic planner orders, they're not live until you hit execute. So the, the, these are just a planning, this is a planning mode. And so when you're in planning mode, 
you know, the, the order monitor does not show you, it does not provide any feedback on planning mode. So, and you'll notice here that, um, all right, since we don't have any open positions yet, right, the break even buttons are, aren't, are disabled for now because there is, you know, there is no profit target to move to break even yet. So we have to wait until our orders get filled. So let's move these guys up here and get them filled. And, um, oh, I had my stop losses in the wrong spot. All right. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's see here. All right. Yeah. So now that we actually have um, an open position, an active position, now we can see the break even buttons are now enabled. So, you know, so the, the order monitors, you know, we're, we're it's, we're trying to build it so that, um, you know, so that what you see kind of intuitive, intuitively makes sense as to what you can do, right? So, um, you know, there, there kind of are some further improvements that we're going to get around to adding for, you know, this, some, you know, there's probably some more minor tweaks that we could do such as like the auto trail buttons, you know, right? They, they kind of look like they're enabled, like you can click on them and do something. Um, and, um, well, yeah, you can actually, um, actually, yeah, that's right. Um, here we go. Another, <laughs> another little, uh, minor improvement here. So let me, uh, let me get an order on here. So let's execute this. All right. So we have a an entry order waiting to get picked up here. And so even though we don't have a stop loss on, if we wanted to, you could turn off the stop loss trailing ahead of time before the order gets filled. Right? So I could go in here and disable all of the stop loss trailing if I wanted to. So, yeah. um, and keep in mind, oh, this is one thing I didn't mention before, but auto trailing applies to all trailing rules. So remember your, your entry orders can also have trailing rules. And so this would disable the trailing for your entry orders as well. Um, so let's actually set that up. Let's have some fun, and let's uh, let's design a entry order that will trail. Um, let's see, limit order. Okay. Um, just a moment here. Let me put an indicator on on the chart. All right, there we go. So an HMA, I'll just, we'll use an HMA. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the, my uh, entry order orders to follow the HMA or to trail the HMA. And I guess before I go too farther, again, the reason why I'm going to set my entry orders to, to follow this HMA is to demonstrate that the um, auto trailing buttons will, they disable all trailing. So they're even, they'll even disable the entry order trailing, not, they're not, so they don't only apply to stop losses, they apply to profit targets and entry orders, uh, right? Any order that has a trailing rule the auto trailing will turn it on or off. 
All right, so let's adjust our initial placement. All right, there's an HMA. So, all right, so our initial placement for our entry order is at the HMA, and now I need to create a trailing rule so that the entry order will keep following the HMA as each bar goes by. So what, all we need to do is adjust our action so that we're moving the order. We don't want to move the order to the last price, but we want to move the order to an indicator value, which is going to be our HMA. All right, HMA. All right, so we're going to move the order to the HMA. And we want to repeat indefinitely, right? So we're going to repeat this until the order gets picked up. <clears throat> so, um, all right. Yeah, just to save myself some time, I will make a copy and then I'll just go in and adjust my profit target quickly. There we go. And so I made a copy of A, so that means, so we can see my entry order, it's gonna follow the HMA, and it already has the trailing rule copied as well. So it's a little uh, quicker setup time if we use the copy. And again, I'll just adjust my profit target um, and if we recall, I also had a different stop loss before as well. So let me move, I'm going to move the market up here a little bit. <clears throat> I want to get the want to get the market away from that HMA a little bit. <clears throat> All right, so if I go long, bingo, we can see A and B, or we can see all of our entry orders are sitting right there on that HMA. And, um, and so as the, as the HMA rises, our entry orders are just going to follow that HMA. And uh, let's see. Oh, hold on a sec here. Looks like, um, <clears throat> oh, right. That's actually what I wanted to demonstrate. <laughs> uh, you notice how order A, entry order A, isn't moving anywhere? Well, that's because I have the auto trailing turned off. Right, I had auto trailing turned off there. So if I turn the auto trailing back on, bingo, order A is now gonna start trailing with the rest of the orders. And if I turn B off, we'll see B gets left behind. <clears throat> there we go, so B stopped trailing and now A and C has the trailing rules still turned on but B is turned off, right? So there you go. That just, so just to kind of prove the point that the trailing, this auto trailing buttons affect all trailing rules for all orders, right? It affects the entry order trailing rules. It'll affect your profit target. If you put some kind of trailing action in your profit targets, right? It'll affect your profit targets as well. So, right. All right, so Jeff is asking, uh, has a couple of questions on a dynamic planner. So, um, all right, so what is track price and what does scale to fit do? All right, let's, uh, here, let's close this out. <clears throat> all 
All right, so track price, um, track price is designed to, as you can see, as, as price, as the market goes, adjusts up and down in real time, you can see that the entry order is also adjusting up and down. All right, so let's turn it off. So if I move my entry order, if I move it a little closer here, and let's adjust things a little bit. So if I move my entry order a little closer to where the market price is and turn on track, you'll see that my entry order is basically it's stuck at this fixed offset price, right? So it's a fixed offset from the market and it's just going to track the market with that fixed offset there. <clears throat> so if you are using a limit order, um, you know, if you're using a limit order, you can kind of set, you know, set that distance from where the market is. You can set that offset distance and then track price will maintain that exact offset distance from where the market last traded, you know, to where it's going to place your, your uh, entry order there. Right. So, um, yeah, track price, um, uh, fairly simple. Um, all right, so let's see. Now, uh, scale to fit. So, scale to fit works with the money management rule. So, um, here, I'm going <clears> to, <throat> I'm going to rip the dynamic planner out here. Um, let's see, yeah, I'll set it right there. Okay, so now, now I can see my order settings at the same time here. All right, so scale to fit in the dynamic planner works in conjunction with the uh, trade fit. Um, so you this risk per trade. So you can set a maximum risk per trade that you're willing to take, right? So let's say, uh, let's, you know, knock this down something a little more reasonable. Let's say, you know, we're only w willing to risk $300 uh, per trade. So this $300 risk per trade, um, is the total risk, right? So, so I have, um, let's see here. Oh, let's knock these down a little bit. So I've got four contracts going on here. I'm trying, at least I'm trying to submit four contracts, right? Four contracts with a 20 tick stop loss. Um, so that's a 20 tick stop loss on oil is Two hundred dollars risk per trade, uh, per contract. Two hundred dollars per contract. So that's actually an eight hundred dollar risk. So um, you know. So actually, right now my stop losses don't actually reasonably match my money management rules, right? So if I knock this, yeah. So with three hundred dollars, and you know, each contract has a two hundred dollar. Um, risk on it with a 20 tick stop loss you know let's see what's going to happen right so i'm trying to get four contracts out but i told blackbird i only want a 300 dollar risk so if i hit let's just reset everything here um so let's reset this and let's turn on scale to fit so if you look Look, order A, zero contracts. Order B, zero contracts. Order C has one contract, right? So I can only put on one contract, <laughs> right? If I want to keep my $300 risk per trade, then that means I can only execute one contract because that one contract, uh, again, if we take a look at the, the risk, 
right? This one contract has a $250 risk, right? So one contract on order C is a $250 risk. So that so that's what scale to fit does is it will adjust your contracts up or down to to reach uh, your your optimal risk uh, goal there. So let's kind of go back into money management, right? So my risk goal is to you know get to three hundred dollars but not exceed three hundred dollars uh, right so so with with my stop losses you know something that's more reasonable would be a thousand bucks you know essentially all of my let's see my stop losses total um, let's see total eight hundred and fifty dollars I believe yeah four contracts with those stop losses should be eight hundred fifty bucks I believe uh, let's find out so I'll click the OK button and turn off the dynamic planner to reset it and turn it back on and um, let's see here so let's see how Blackbird adjusted things all right, so we can see here that Blackbird has got us to a thousand dollars risk exactly, and the way it got us there was Order C has zero contracts, B has two, and A has three. So Blackbird's been able to kind of optimize the number of contracts for each order set um, to reach a thousand bucks, right? But you know, let's say. Uh, you know, you don't want Blackbird to put zero contracts on order C, right? Let's see, you know, order C must have at least one contract, um, right? So we want to force, so we don't, we don't want to force, but we don't want to allow Blackbird that much flexibility to set the number of contracts for C down to zero. Um, so how would we do that? Um, Let's open up the order set again. So there's a couple of ways we can do that. So what we're going to do is if you click on the C here, we can go into um, go into the uh, kind of order set options uh, or parameters, right? So these, these are some um, kind of control mechanisms for order set C here. Um, so if we look at what's on, turned on, we have allow downscaling. So I could simply just uncheck that and bingo. Blackbird would not be allowed to downscale the number of contracts for C. Um, or another thing I could do is I could just adjust it. And, um, you know, I could s set my, uh, acceptable variance down to zero um, like so um, so allow downscaling and you can see it's one to one so effectively I, I I removed the downscaling by removing my acceptable variance um, so but you know that's really kind of a lousy way of doing it you know the better thing to do is just remove the downscaling right so uh, downscaling would be more, would make more sense, or act, you know, actually using the downscaling would make more sense if, say, for example, I had ten contracts. You know, if I'm if I'm trying to get ten contracts on order C, then you know, then maybe I might want to allow Blackbird some flexibility. So let's say I'll allow. Blackbird to adjust the downscaling by five contracts. Oops. So now we can see Blackbird can can adjust the number, can downscale the number of contracts from ten down to five contracts. Right. So, but um, there's kind of a quick example, but let me just kind of get this. 
set this back to normal here. So really what we'd want to do is just turn off the downscaling and then that forces Blackbird to at least have one contract in order C. And you know what? We probably want to do the same thing for B, turn off that. So that way we at least have one contract for order B as well. So, um, you know, but of course, you know, that's up to you. Maybe order B, you are a little more flexible and maybe, you know, it's acceptable to you that, you know, that they're, that Blackbird reduced the number of contracts to zero for B. Um, but for this example, I'll just turn it off for B as well. So the only um, order set that's that's adjust that's downscalable would be A, right? So Blackbird can can downscale A to zero contracts if it wanted to. Um, so, but what we could do um, is I could adjust the variance down to one. So Blackbird, so the um, least number of contracts would be one, right? So Blackbird could knock the number of contracts for order set A down to one. So at least, so A will have at least one contract, B will have at least one contract, and C will have at least one contract. Um, yeah. All right. So now let's take a look. So with that, with those adjustments, let's take a look now. And, um, so let's reset the dynamic planner again. Let's reset it. There we go. And all right. So now we can see we've got two, one, and one for our number of contracts. And our risk is at 850 bucks. Um, right. So with, remember with our money management, with money management set to a thousand bucks, um, you know, that's, on, that's only a $150 difference from 850. So realistically, Blackbird's not able to adjust the number of contracts that much. Well, actually in this case, it's not able to adjust it at all. However, if, if I pull in some of these stop losses, now we can see that Blackbird can now increase the number of contracts. So now we're up to six contracts total. So Blackbird was able to add on two additional contracts, right? It added, it added one contract to order A and it added one contract to order C. So we can see there, C has th two contracts. A has three contracts now. So, and if I, if I pull in order set C as well, oops, oh, market's going down here. Let's adjust things. There we go. Um, so there, so with, so, um, Pulling in these stop losses, right, is it's going to, that'll, that reduces your risk and then allows Blackbird to add more contracts on. So we can see right now Blackbird's able to calculate a $980 risk with our stop losses. So keep in mind, um, you could do something like this. So you notice how, uh, right now, let me grab an arrow. So you notice how the market's actually below our, it's, it's below our stop losses in Dynamic Planner. Um, <clears throat> but that's actually okay because remember our limit order, our, our entry order is a limit, which is sitting up here. So market has to pull way back to actually fill the order and then the market's going to be sitting above our stop losses when the order actually gets filled. So even though this looks like it's invalid now, but when the 
order actually gets filled, the market will be above our stop losses. So, okay. So with that, let me take a look at the question board here. All right, so Bob is wanting to push out his profit target. Um, so, so essentially that would just be adding some uh, trailing rules to a profit target. Um, so Bob, if you want to give me an example of what you would be using to push your profit target out, I haven't come across any kind of practical in, uh, practical indicator, you know, that tells you you should be pushing your profit targets out yet. So I don't really have any kind of practical example. Um, but let's, you know, let's take a look here. Let's, so let's take a look at order set C at the profit target. So we could create, you know, some kind of a trailing action, trailing rule here that would keep pushing that profit target out. Um, you know, let's see, let's, I'll set up the price first. Um, so let's see, this is initially a 25 tick profit target. So let's say we wanted to adjust it to, so what we'll do is we'll take the, um, the entry price and let's say we wanted to turn it into a, oops, not 250, a 50 tick profit target. Right, let's see, uh, there. So if we wanted to, you know, if we had some kind of a condition that tells us, you know, hey, let's take this 25 tick profit target and let's turn it into a 50 tick profit target, right? So that's, that's the action that we would take, so that will, turn this into a 50 tick profit target. Um, but what, you know, the real key to this is, you know, what's what's the triggering condition that tells us we should make this a, a 50 tick profit target here? Let's see, yeah, so, well, if you attach your profit target to a moving average, that's tricky, because for a profit target, most moving averages are on the wrong side of the market. You have to find some kind of moving average that stays on the correct side of the market. You know, we, we uh, yeah, we, we could. Um, so if you got some kind of special moving average, um, you can definitely attach your profit target to a moving average, right? I can just go to indicator value and, right, we could attach it to the SMA. Um, <clears throat> so I guess... You know, if you're counter trend trading, attaching your profit target to the SMA um, would make sense. Um, um, but, you know, if you're trading with the trend, then most moving averages are underneath the market. But, but you know, bottom line is, yeah, sure, if you got some indicator, um, well, actually, there are third party indicators out there um, that that do draw profit target estimations on the chart. Um, I know back to the uh, um, indicator warehouse, right? Their DTS system, uh, some of their indicators in their DTS system uh, draw profit targets on the chart. So you could definitely attach your profit target you know, to an indicator value that's estimating where your profit targets should go. Um, Back to the Future also has an indicator that um, draws profit target locations on the chart. Um, you know, so you could, you could use something like that. Um, and if those indicators, if they if they are adjusting those profit targets, well, you know, uh, then attaching your profit target to that indicator plot, you know, Blackbird would also adjust your profit target to match what these indicators would be plotting on the chart. So, all right. Yeah, you know, Bob, I, I just, I 
I can't think of any practical indicator to attach a profit target to. Um, yeah, if you have, if anybody has something in mind, let me know, and we can we can um, test it out right now. But you know, I'm not. You know, I've got a lot of ANA indicators, but I'm only familiar with a couple of them. So <laughs> I don't know. Maybe some of these ANA indicators I have might uh, might be suitable for profit targets. I I, I wouldn't know because I just don't play around with them enough. I'm not sure what indicator to use here, but um, you know, as but here, you know, this demonstrates that you could easily attach your profit target to some kind of indicator. Um, uh, indicator, and I still have a 50 tick offset here, so uh, you know, I can attach it to an indicator. Uh, you know, and you can even put a, a little bit of an offset to the indicators. So let's say I wanted to do a one tick higher than the SMA 14, I could do something like that, um, right? So if I if I set my trailing rule up like this, right? So there's there's no delay, there's no trigger, and so this trailing rule is just going to constantly move this profit target to the SMA plus one tick. And it's going to repeat it indefinitely. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, so very easy to adjust your profit targets, um, you know, if you've got some kind of indicator to kind of move them around. So, um, you know, but maybe something a little more practical. Um, so let's see, let's rename this here. So this is just going to follow and so so this rule is just going to follow an indicator um, you know another example would be um, <clears throat> so you know maybe you could create some kind of a bloodhound signal that you that uh, would detect that uh, you know that the market might make a big move you know so if you get some kind of bloodhound signal you know identifying potential big movements in the market then you could use a bloodhound signal to move your profit target right so in other words your profit target it would, it would, you know, it's going to, it's going to go in initially as a 25 tick profit target. But if you get some kind of bloodhound signal, you know, so we'll just put, we'd put our trigger on a bloodhound signal and you would, you know, you'd have to load up your bloodhound, you know, template in the, in the logic template that has that special triggering condition. And then in the action, we could take the action and from the entry price create uh, you know a 50 tick profit target and we want to make sure that we move our profit target you know with the direction of the trade so um, and then repeat well that's only a one-time that's only a one-time action right so if you get this bloodhound signal then you know, you only need to move your profit target once to a 50 tick profit target. So the repeat, you can just leave that on none because there is there is no repeat. It just this action would only occur once. Yeah, and then um, yeah, I'm just kind of thinking through on using a bloodhound signal, um, right? So this would be a, a simple. Yeah. So this example using a bloodhound signal. Yeah, this would work if, let's say, Bloodhound gave you kind of one, one simple signal. But let's say, right, um, hypothetically, that your Bloodhound is giving you continuous signals. You know, right? so if if you devised some kind of Bloodhound output where 
um, where Bloodhound's giving you constant, um, giving you a constant output on one bar, on the next bar, and then the next bar, and the next bar, and the next bar. All right. So as, as long as the market is making a strong move, um, in the you know a strong trend move, Bloodhound continues to give you a continuous signal. Um, you know, so yeah, so, so kind of, I guess, state it simply, um, you know, I know a bunch of people have designed Bloodhound to give them continuous signal outputs as long as the market is making a strong move, right? So in other words, they want to stay in, they want to stay in the trade as long as Bloodhound is telling is giving them like a long output right and then once bloodhound's long output stops then that's kind of an indication that well maybe the market has finished its strong move so say you know so say for example you are using uh you want to use some kind of bloodhound signal that you've come up with that gives you a continuous stream of long outputs every bar Long output, long output, as long as the market is making a strong move. And so you want to use that as your condition to turn your profit target into a 50 tick profit target. So um, so if that was the case, then we would make some adjustments here. So. So if you wanted to keep your profit target a 50 tick profit target only when Bloodhound has this continuous stream of output, then what you need to do is you need to turn the repeat on and you would check this repeat when re-triggered, right? So the re-trigger is referring back to the bloodhound trigger right so as long as blood so let's say we're in a long trade if we're in a long trade um, as long as bloodhound continues to give a long signal a long output signal then that bloodhound signal would be used to generate a 50 tick profit target Right, so as long as Bloodhound continues to give a, a an output signal, right, with the repeat set to only repeat when re-triggered, so in other words, um, the repeat will only happen when the Bloodhound trigger occurs. So that would keep our profit target at a 50 tick profit target. Um, but if the bloodhound signal stops, right? So the bloodhound signal stops, and so we're not getting a re-triggering, then that might be your condition in which you might want to go back to a 25 tick profit target. Um, and so then what we'd have to do is, um, let's say, let's get rid of that one. So then what we'd have to do is create a trailing rule that will uh, return to a 25 tick profit target. Um, and let's see, to do this, uh, let's adjust our action. So from the entry price, we want to go back to a 25 tick profit target. Um, yeah, so allow movement needs to be both directions now, um, because actually, because we would be moving, right? If we're going from a 50 tick profit target back down to a 25 tick profit target, you know, that's actually going to be moving against the direction of your trade, right? So if you're in a long trade, and you had a 50 tick profit target and now you move your profit target back to a 25 tick profit target 
right? That's going against the direction of the trade. Um, so we could either use against the direction, but I just leave this on both. Just leave it where it's at. Use the default. Um, repeat. We want to keep repeating this rule um, every bar, like so. Um, and then what we want to do is change the evaluate to furthest from price. Right, so with evaluate set to furthest from price, that means this 50 tick trailing rule has priority, right? Because 50 ticks is definitely gonna be further away from price than a 25 tick profit target would be, right? So our 50 tick trailing rule is gonna have priority, but our trailing rule is only, it's only gonna, it, uh, our 50 tick trailing rule can only execute, remember, when we get this bloodhound signal. The bloodhound signal and that bloodhound signal has to keep repeating. In other words, right, so our triggering condition, which is our bloodhound signal, has to keep re-triggering in order to keep this 50 tick profit target running. Right, so when the bloodhound signals stop, when they when there's no more bloodhound signals, then there's no more re-triggering. So basically, this trailing rule, the 50 tick trailing rule, is no longer executing. So then there's only one trailing rule left to execute, which is return back to the 25 tick profit target. And so, right, so with only one trailing rule executing bloodhound has no choice but to say well this 25 tick you know this 25 tick profit target well that's furthest from price because that that is the only trailing rule that's actually executing right now right <clears throat> so um so the yeah so there's probably I would say probably a more practical way of um, a more practical way of creating some kind of situation where you could um, convert where you could move your profit target back you know further out. Um, Yeah, further out for more more profit there, and then you know, and then if you know if if the special condition stops happening, you know, then you might want to move it back to a twenty five tick profit target. So, yeah, yeah. Hey, you guys, have a good weekend. Um, enjoy the weather out there. It's it's nice where I'm at. So, have a good one, and uh, I hope to see you guys next week.